you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello. Uh, okay, good here. Uh, thank you very much for uh, attending. Uh, yeah, we will be talking about running nodes, and uh, particularly uh, running nodes in uh, resource-constrained devices. So, uh, you know, uh, click. Um, click. Uh, no. Now, no. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> Permit. Mm -hmm. Now. Uh, <laughs> thank you, thank you. Uh, yeah, uh, decentralization starts by people running nodes at home. So uh, this is a decentralized technology, and, and, and this is a key absolutely key feature for, for, uh, for a blockchain to be decentralized, completely decentralized. So, for example, how many of you are running nodes at home? <laughs> yeah, Raspberry Pi, yeah, not much. Uh, what kind of nodes? Uh, Ethereum 1, Ethereum 2, uh, are someone validating, are uh, running Beacon Chain? Not much. And I think that's a, a little problem. I mean, uh, and that's why we are here. I mean, uh, when, when I first ran into, into Ethereum, I was uh, learning about the technology, watching videos, and, uh, you know, getting myself uh, educated with Ethereum. I was very excited. And, and I thought, uh, how can I contribute? Uh, to this, to the community? Well, the answer was obvious. I mean, uh, you, you can run a node. So I decided to set up a node. And when I got the, the node up and running, uh, I thought, wait a minute. This was not, not easy. And I had a, a Linux background. I was working for a company for 15 years that is uh, Linux focused, I mean, with, in server side. And I, I have this kind, uh, this kind of skills, and it wasn't easy for me. So I thought, well, we'll be able, regular users, to, to run an Ethereum node. And the answer by that time was obviously not. And another question that, uh, that, that, that I uh, ask myself was, um, yeah, does it make sense to to run a node on my laptop, for example, or on my desktop? Because you know you have your daily job, you have to do a lot of tasks, and uh, you are uh, browsing the internet. And I don't know. I thought no, I can I cannot uh, run a node on on my laptop, for example. So we start to to looking for other alternatives, and that's why uh, we find these little devices that you all know, like the Raspberry Pis. There are a lot of boards, but Raspberry Pis, and, and, and thought, hey, can uh, a device like this uh, run a node, sync the whole blockchain, etc.? So we tried, we set up the node, and it worked. And here we are. So, uh, Fernando is talking a, a little about what we provide. Okay, uh, I'm here to talk about uh, what is Ethereum ARM. Okay, that you can read it. We provide a blue and blue image for um, ARM socks that automatically turns a board into a full Ethereum node. What does it mean? Right now, this is an Ubuntu 2004 image. It's based on Ubuntu. And uh, we provide a set of uh, uh, scripts and, and a whole repository who transform this Ubuntu image in an Ethereum node in an automatic way. You have to do nothing. Uh, it's, uh, the only thing that you have to do is uh, write uh, in an SD card the image, plug it to the device, and you are good to go. You are running. So 
what do we think that is needed to, to create this kind of machine? The first uh, thing that you have to think is the configuration. Uh, for regular users to run an image, it's pretty uh, useful that you don't have to, to change any configuration, that everything works out of the box. And in this image, everything works out of the box. You have available all the, um, almost all the Ethereum clients, and already configured, already all the um, configuration files in his side, the partitions, the, the ports, everything is ready to go. And you have to be, another one, it has to be easy. The installation is the easiest installation that you could imagine. So you have to write one, one image in a SD card. And the upgrade is also easy because we provide an APT repository and you only need to update the whole system. In, with the, the whole system, the new versions of the package of the Ethereum clients it will be available for you and we will automatically update it and restart it. We have to support as many devices as we can. Right now, we have available the image for the Raspberry Pi 4. It's the only one, but if you use our GitHub repository, you could use also for the right that Diego will talk about it later. And this year, probably one or two more devices are coming. And one, there, one of them is very promising. Um, we have to make sure that this image is production ready. And right now it's production ready because we are staking from day zero in a Raspberry Pi 4 with almost no problem running um, Ethereum 1 and Ethereum 2 client in the same device. Uh, why we choose uh, ARM devices? Okay, like the other before. First of all, they are affordable. Most of these devices are cheaper than the regular ones. It's cheaper than an Intel NUC or another this, uh, small server or a small home server are cheaper. Uh, are low power. The, uh, I think we can run a node under 15 watts, and in our methods, the Raspberry Pi 4 are syncing the whole uh, network, the whole blockchain, running under nine, nine or ten, ten watts. Nine on ten. So. Yeah, and the nine on ten watts, and they are performant. Uh, right now, these devices are able to sync the whole blockchain and are uh, able to run all the clients in one only devices. And with the ROC5, that's a board that we will talk later, even the, the hub based one. There are small form factors. Okay, what does it mean? Is there are small devices. You could run it at home because it's a very small device, not very noisy. Sometimes it's, uh, uh, it depends on the fan, the, the, the fan stack that you buy to, to try to cool it. At, and you could only with two small wires, uh, you can those two small cables, sorry, you can uh, use one for the power and another one for the network and you're ready to go. You don't need a big installation at your home, you don't need to run a, a home server room or nothing like this. You can run a node in, in a box like this size, very, very small. And this is the, the last point is for us, very important is architectural diversity. Okay, most of the nodes that are running right now the, the Ethereum blockchain are based on Intel or AMD architecture. If you found any problem like Spectre a few years ago that could be a security problem in, is related to the architecture, it's useful for the network to have another node that are running a different architecture in order to, it's like the same thing with uh, the variety of clients. You need to, uh, protect yourself, and if some client has uh, a bug or some uh, security problem, it's the same for the architecture. Uh, Sorry, Fernando. We, we are uh, as well uh, testing RISC-5, RISC yeah. not only ARM, and, and yeah. it's a very uh, interesting uh, architecture because it's open. And uh, we would not have only uh, open software, but uh, uh, open hardware. Open hardware. So. It would be uh, very interesting. Yeah. Um, Later we can talk about the image itself. What does this image provide? The first thing is an automatic installation and setup. That means the, the image take care of all the steps needed to, to run a node. Uh, it uh, format the disk, uh, create the partitions. Uh, you obviously need an external disk, an SSD disk, or an NVMe disk. And the image uh, 
do deserve for you. Uh, it also creates a uh, Ethereum user and all of the configuration for all the clients. It includes all the major clients using our own IPT repository. And in, in our repository, you could easily install or easily update any of the major Ethereum clients. This uh, uh, package includes assistant their services, so you could start, stop, restart any of the uh, Ethereum clients. They are running in background. If the if the uh, process has any problem or stops, it will restart automatically. It will continue to to working. Um, and I think for us is very important. It including uh, self monitoring dashboards using Prometheus and Grafana. We include a Prometheus server that are uh, already pre configured to. Uh, read stats for all the clients and even stats from the own device. And with this uh, Grafana dashboards, you could uh, be able to see the progress of the syncing. You could be able if, uh, to see the memory, network, disk uh, problems. You could be, uh, you could not barely know your hardware and know if you need anything else, more disk, uh, more memory, or whatever, or even the the throughput of your network, anything. It's all ready to, to see. And Diego is going to talk to you a little more about the device itself that we are working with. Yeah. The, the Raspberry Pi, uh, this is our most proven uh, device. I mean, we, you all know it. It's a uh, 8 giga RAM uh, model. It's capable of syncing the, the mainnet in two, three days, I would say two, with the new Snap system. Uh, you just need a USB 3.2 uh, uh, SSD disk, an SSD disk with, with a bridge. And it's capable of running both Ethereum 1 nodes and Ethereum 2. I mean, uh, for example, Geth and Lighthouse at the same time. And we've been, we've been uh, staking here with this device since uh, day zero, but meaning both nodes, one, the beacon chain, and then one validator in the same device, just with uh, this board and, and USB 3 uh, USB three disk. So uh, it's very proof. I mean, it's rock solid. We didn't have any major problem with, with it. It was running 24-7 for two years or, you know, always there is a blackout or, or maybe a, a, a problem with the micro SD, but minor problems. I mean, uh, the devices are uh, very solid and uh, ideal for this kind of tasks. And it's been great, it's been great. Uh, this one, we received this one, the Raksa Rock 5B, uh, I think two weeks ago. Well, this is a game changer because um, this has uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM, uh, eight cores, a powerful, very powerful CPU, but an NVMe with four lanes. And it's amazingly fast. I mean, this is another kind of device. This is able to sync mainnet in 18 hours. And currently, we are testing it and running Visu, which in the Raspberry Pi, it was impossible to, to run Visu. In, not impossible, but it couldn't uh, sync uh, the whole blockchain. And this, uh, we are currently making a test with this uh, because it's very recent. I think it's, it's not even available for the public, but uh, we uh, contacted the, the manufacturer directly, and, and we could buy them uh, buy directly from directly from from, from them. And uh, it, uh, we were uh, absolutely uh, astonished because uh, it's it's uh, it's an amazing board, and it has another interesting uh, capability. That is that uh, it includes the crypto extensions, and this will improve uh, very, uh, we think, very much the the hashing tasks. For example, uh, we need to test this, 
Uh, but, uh, for example, the, the Raspberry Pi didn't include this because of uh, licensing uh, uh, problems. And this is another uh, great feature of, of this uh, board. We are maybe, we are planning maybe some two or three weeks yep. uh, in releasing an image for this. And, and everyone uh, will be able to to run this device uh, as, a, as an Ethereum node. And the last one uh, that we are talking today is the hard kernel Android M1. This, this one is more equivalent to, to the Raspberry Pi 4. It's something, uh, the, the CPU is a less performant, but it's okay. But it has NVMe support that it's uh, very cool. That includes as well the, the crypto extensions, the hardware crypto extensions, that it's uh, very interesting. Uh, now we are talking a little of the merge. Well, you know, we are all very excited with the merge. And we, we've been, uh, we've been do testing uh, pretty much from the beginning. Uh, you know, the, the big change is uh, the switch from PO to POS. And that mining, mining, will be able producing blocks. Will be able to, uh, you you will be able to produce blocks on consumer hardware like this, like these boards. And that, well, name changes of of the Ethereum clients. We have uh, pretty much all clients available uh, as of today. Uh, for everyone who wants to to play along with with Emerge to to join the, the to join the test nets, uh, we have a specific image which you can then load and and run. Uh, you know that now you have to run uh, two clients, the F1 client and F2 clients, uh, at the same time. Uh, you can pick uh, whatever client you want and and test uh, in in your device. Uh, we we join it uh, as well. Uh, many mainnet shadow folks, you know, that this this was uh, organized by by the Ethereum Foundation team. We we've been in contact with them and and join in. I think three three mainnet shadow folks. It went right and well. It uh, they work uh, perfectly. And. Uh, Four days ago, we joined uh, the Robsten uh, folk as well. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> so yeah, uh, it seems that uh, uh, Ethereum, in, Ethereum is going in, in, the good, in the right path. I mean, uh, it will be able, you will be able to run an oath with consumer hardware, and, and this is great. And if you compare it with other blockchains you realize that uh, Ethereum is taking this very seriously, very seriously, because uh, from the very beginning, you were able to run a node. And if you uh, read other uh, blockchain specifications, you will see that uh, you will need an absolute server monster, in some cases, to run a, a blockchain node. So, will it be possible to run uh, post nodes in these kinds of devices. Well, uh, two or three weeks ago, I would say mo most probably. With the new Rock 5 board, absolutely yes. So, yeah, we will be there. We'll be working on this. And when the merge comes, uh, I'm sure that uh, anyone, anybody that uh, wants to, to run a node in these kinds of, of devices, uh, it will be quite easy. So. That's all. Thank you. Questions? Thank you.